If you're thinking about making a move to New Westminster, then I've got five things that you should consider before you do. My name is Jeff McLennan. I am a realtor with the Valley McLennan Real Estate Team in New West. And not only do I work here, but I grew up here. I'm raising my family here. And I would like to share the information I know with you guys. I imagine that if you're like most people who are living in Vancouver and thinking about making a move to New Westminster, that you're not just considering New West. You're probably thinking about Burnaby, the Tri-Cities, maybe you're even considering crossing a bridge and going into Surrey. So how are you supposed to figure out whether New West is a good fit for you or not? Let's get into some of the pros and cons. Now, before I do that, if you enjoy this content, please hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna follow for more information about real estate in the Lower Mainland with a focus on New Westminster. The number one thing that you should be thinking about when you're considering a move to New West is affordability. I'm gonna talk about resale because that's what I know, but this applies to rentals as well too. If somebody coming from Calgary or Saskatchewan was to look at our prices, they'd be pretty shell-shocked. But if they're comparing it to Vancouver, you get a pretty big discount for not being that far away. Your average house in Vancouver right now is selling for $2.3 million. On the other hand, a house in New West goes for 1.4. $900,000 you save if you're buying a house in New West. The discount for condos is not quite as steep. In Vancouver, you're looking at an average price of about 785, whereas in New Westminster, it drops down to 633. If those prices are still not enough to make it feasible, you should maybe consider going further out. Even if you just drive across the bridge to Surrey, condos drop in price by another 100 grand. On the other hand, strangely enough, houses are about the same average. One thing that never makes any sense to me is how big of a discount you get just from going from Burnaby crossing into New West. Your average house in Burnaby goes for about $1.89 million. You are saving almost $500,000. And if you're going to Vancouver, you're only adding about 10 minutes to your commute. And speaking of commute, let's talk about the second thing you should consider, and that's transit. If you are taking the SkyTrain, New West is fantastic. We have so many SkyTrain stations, it's ridiculous. And the commute into Vancouver is not long at all. If you are going from New Westminster Station to Granville Station, you're gonna do that in 27 minutes. On the other hand, if you're driving, New West can get really congested. Before Victoria, New West was the capital of BC and all roads led to New West. It was meant to be a hub. And so you have commuters from all over the Lower Mainland coming through New West on their way in and on their way home from work. I try to avoid certain streets, specifically McBride and Royal, from four o'clock to about six. The other thing is that New West basically has two downtown cores. You have downtown New Westminster and uptown New Westminster. Both of these are pretty congested throughout the entire day. You have an absolute ton of construction happening right now downtown. This has been going on for a very long time. Hopefully it ends soon and things get better. And then uptown, it's just not very car friendly. It's great if you're a pedestrian or if you're on a bicycle. Driving around uptown can be diff pretty difficult. There's lots of no turn signs. There is little parking because they've added lots of bike lanes. You're better off to walk. On the transit note, there's one thing that is connected. You're not gonna be taking this transit, but we should talk about it as well too, and that's the trains. People always ask me when they're moving here, how bad is the train noise? I've lived in Queens Park, I've lived in Brow of the Hill, I've lived at the Key, and currently I live in Victoria Hill. I have heard the trains everywhere I live. If you're like me, and I suspect that most people are, you're gonna get used to that noise. After a couple weeks, your brain is just gonna drown it out and you're not even gonna hear it. The trains are not controlled by the city, so it's all part of a negotiation. If you want more information on which areas have whistle, cessation, jump on their website. I'll put a link below so that you can find it um, and you can check which neighborhoods are under what sorts of controls. There is one piece of train noise that I never got used to. Down at the Key is where they change their cars. That's when they shunt. So that's when they're banging the, the cars apart. I had these touch lamps when I lived down there and whenever they were shunting, the, the lights would flicker on and off. 
That is loud. Now it is a trade-off. New West was built along a river. The trains run along that river. You are getting these absolutely stunning views. You are getting the Keys Boardwalk and the market, which is fantastic. But the trade-off is you do have to put up with the shunting and really, you know whether that's something that you'll be okay with or if it'll drive you nuts. As far as cycling goes, New West is putting in bike lanes. It is very cyclist friendly. Although if you haven't been to New West before, it's maybe a little bit more difficult than cycling in say Vancouver. New West is basically one giant hill. My wife grew up in Vancouver and years ago when I took her on one of our first dates, I took her cycling in New Westminster. I thought she was gonna kill me. So cycle friendly, but it is difficult on those bikes. If you've got kids, they are going to build up their core strength. The first time as a child, I made it all the way up second street without having to get off my bike and walk was one of the most proud moments of my life. On that note, if you have kids, you might be asking yourself how family friendly is New West? And I have to say, New West is great for families. As far as schools go, we have an absolute ton. You are getting elementary schools throughout the city. We have two middle schools. We have one high school and we have a private school that goes all the way elementary through high school. In 1999, when I graduated, I was supposed to be the very last class to graduate from the old building in New Westminster Secondary School. There were a ton of delays, but I am happy to say they have finally finished the high school and students now have a brand new facility that's pretty amazing. We are spoiled rotten as far as parks go. There are way too many parks for me to go into all of them, but some of my favorites are Moody Park, Hume Park, the much newer Pier Park that's built along the river down at the Quay, and my absolute favorite, Queens Park. This park has everything you could possibly want. Now, I'm biased, I grew up a block from it, Currently, I live two blocks away from it, but that's not an accident. I wanted to be close when I bought my current home. We also have a ton of community events going on in New West. This city is always up to something. There's Fridays on Front Street. There's the Anvil Center, which hosts all sorts of cool events. One of the neatest ones that I've, they've done recently was Bevies and Bites, where you could sample all sorts of local breweries and what they had to offer. On top of that, you have the Food Truck Festival, which is massive and so much fun. And on that note, if you're curious about the food scene in New Westminster, that's the next thing I wanna talk about. This is one of my favorite topics. If you are a foodie and you're thinking about moving to New West, I'm going to selfishly plug my other YouTube channel, which is Eat New West. You can see all the cool restaurants, what they have to offer, you can see polls on who has voted what restaurants the absolute best for such a small town new west has so much great choice when it comes to food and that's the final thing i want to talk about small town feel unlike other suburbs that it's surrounded by burnaby or coquitlam new west is small the population is only about 70,000 people and you're gonna know whether that's a really good thing for you or not you're gonna get to know people in town we have so many community facebook groups and there are programs for new people to get to know the neighborhood and to get to know other new people in town when you go to the grocery store there's a good chance you're going to run into somebody you know this happens to me every time i go downtown every time i go to safeway wherever i am i'm bumping into people a lot of whom i went to high school with because people tend to stay here if this sounds great to you fantastic on the other hand, if you're like, ugh, that stresses me out, well then maybe Burnaby or Coquitlam is a better choice for you because I don't think that happens there. I hope you found that interesting. I hope those points help you decide whether or not New West is a good fit for you or not. If you wanna see more content like this and also content that highlights the real estate that's for sale in New Westminster, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you soon. On the other hand, if you're driving, you need to get ready for a bit of congestion. On the other hand, if you're driving, New West can get pretty congested. Conge congested. <laughs>